Welcome back to another episode of KISS TV, Keeping It Simple. Thank you for joining us again. Today we're going to talk a little bit about understanding the basics of OpenStack. OpenStack. So let's go ahead and jump right in today. So let's talk about a few of the things that you may be hearing about is what is OpenStack? What exactly is OpenStack? Well, OpenStack is a collection of open source software that allows us to perform certain functions. We're seeing OpenStack really come to life in the cloud space as it offers an infrastructure service cloud. But really, it's a compute, storage, and uh, network combination of hardware and software to meet uh, business objectives. So often we hear the word KVM. OpenStack is associated with KVM in the sense that most of the OpenStack implementations run on KVM, which is a type of a virtualizer. So another type of virtual, virtual machine software virtualizer is VMware. Um, also, we hear things like CloudStack. Now, there used to be a closer union uh, between CloudStack and OpenStack. That has gone a little bit apart as now Citrix is very into the CloudStack portion of it. So we're going to see this whole OpenStack thing evolve over the course of time. But here are just some of the key terms. Remember, KVM, you're going to have a virtual engine. You're going to have a collection of projects or open source. And then you're going to hear terms like cloud stack, uh, which is a Citrix version, open stack, which is a little more open. Um, and, and let's talk through some of those software applications that make up open stack. No different than many infrastructures that we're already accustomed to, we have these three primary components, network, storage, and compute. And based on all three of these, we offer up a service to our users. So some of the things that you're going to see in network, right, is the standard stuff that you're going to see. This is going to manage your traffic. Right down in here, uh, we see a WAN optimizer, for example. So we're going to have WAN optimization. That hasn't changed any when you go into OpenStack. Now, storage becomes a little different because in a true storage environment, we really are dealing with object-based storage. And some of the software products that you may uh, be aware of in this space would be Swift or Cinder. Now, these are both OpenStack projects that have been kind of solidified into an offering uh, we call OpenStack. So Swift is very popular, and then we have Cinder that's coming up. Now, object storage is common within an OpenStack environment, but now we're, we're seeing also block storage as well. We're not going to talk about the differences uh, between the two storages for, for an OpenStack environment, but we will on another KISS TV episode. And then compute here, you have the normal suspects, right? So this is managing your VMs, right? All of your virtual machines. You're getting your processing power here, right? Out of this system, you have HA, you have Coop, you have all of those things that you need in a standard compute environment. One of the main terms you're going to see here is Nova or Keystone or Horizon, okay? All of these are, are common OpenStack software applets that you're going to see uh, within an OpenStack environment. So let's talk through some of the things uh, that you may be asking yourself at this point. And one of the biggest questions you should ask yourself is support. So if this is truly going to be an enterprise solution, something that you're willing to risk your customer service on, is it supportable and is it mature enough in order to support that? So let's look at an example here with a Linux distro. So we have a, a Linux distribution called Puppy. And Puppy is a, a Linux distribution. I don't think a lot of people have heard about it, but it's one of them out there, right? Non-supported. Okay, so we'll do that with NS. Okay, so non-supported. And would we, inter would we put that in our enterprise? We probably would not put Puppy 
in our enterprise, right? So, but we would take in our enterprise and run Red Hat or SUC, etc., right? So these are the type of things that because this is a supported distribution of Red Hat, excuse me, of Linux. Now, does that mean that the Red Hat or the SUC or whatever supported version has everything? It doesn't. So they, they have to lock down those versions to make sure that they're stable and worthy enough to run inside of your enterprise. And that's really what we're going after. OpenStack is very similar in this, in this perspective. Now we have some companies that are already starting to step forward. We have um, the OpenStack community. For example, Dell is part of this community uh, with the NASA Nebula project. All right, and so with others in the industry where we've teamed together to offer certain hardware. So you're going to see things like, for example, from Dell, which is Crowbar. So they use Crowbar as their um, ability to distribute within the, in the OpenStack environment, and they support uh, inside of the Essex build right now of OpenStack. But the point that I'm making here is OpenStack by itself often with its associated projects, um, right? So that's going to be your things like Nova and Swift and those software products that make up the open stack, right? So you can serve customers. You're going to find in the very new future, future in 2013, you're going to see a lot more companies come out with their version of open stack. For example, there'll be a Red Hat open stack. I would assume that Dell will continue its work in open stack and come up with a Dell OpenStack. All of these will be supported configurations from these companies so that you can have the rest of mind um, and ease that you need to run an enterprise environment absolutely has to include support. In summary, what are we going to hear when, when we hear certain terms related to OpenStack? Where are we going to associate them? Remember, KVM is that virtual engine within the OpenStack infrastructure. Remember, OpenStack is made up of compute and storage nodes. Remember, these are object-based storage. You can have block, but typically you're going to see an object-based storage node. You're going to also see things like Nova, Swift, and Crowbar. And then you're going to see more companies coming up with their solutions that are very inexpensive but feed into the OpenStack environment, like Nagios, Nessus, Manage IQ, those type of software applets are all ready and available to support the OpenStack environment. Well, thank you again for joining us today for KISS TV, Keeping It Simple. Hopefully today you've learned something. You can put into place your plans to execute upon what you have learned. Have a great day and come see us again.